everybody, and welcome to the Lip Men on UFL. Lip Men on Sports is also one of the shows on the Fuel Network. It is on the Sport Cat Shows on YouTube. Please tune in to that. Go to the Sport Cat Shows. Like, follow, subscribe, and follow on YouTube. We are live on all kinds of streams. We're on uh, Linked, Twitched in, Kick, Twitch, I don't know, Facebook, some other things. But aside from all that, we have somebody here that is more important than me. We have one of the Mr. Lip Men's. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Uh, thank you to Fuel for having us join your powerhouse network. We're going to try to kick it up with some UFL Octane. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for, for not just being the producer today, but being the co-host. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Kick it up with Octane. Let's hear it. Come on, it's football. <laughs> yeah, I got to watch some this weekend. I didn't get to watch a lot, but I got to watch some. It was Mother's Day weekend, so. All right. Also, I want to remind everybody, and let me post this up here before I forget about it. We also are live on the Yergs Radio Network, and you can call in if you have a question for one of us. Um, one triple eight eighty eight Y E R G Z. One triple eight 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 Y E R G Z. We the phone lines are open, and we welcome your call. And also, I got a surprise celebrity guest appearance here. I'm going to bring in. Hey, Miss Cheyenne. She loves Love us it. too. So. That is a real celebrity. True. <laughs> Hello, Cheyenne. How are you? The pretty face. You <laughs> certainly <goodness. wouldn't> me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's not going to be a contest here with, with this particular uh, population of, of the show. Um, well, I win anyway, it. so. <laughs> All right. So, folks, thank you for tuning into the Lip Men, and this show is full of fumbles. So I, I am sorry to Fuel Network and to everyone who's tuning in for the, the missed fumbles. One, we're down a Lip Man. Um, he couldn't make it. Two, I inferred last week that we were going to have a guest, and I fumbled that. We don't have a guest, but we are on the Fuel Network, so we thought we were last week, and we weren't, but we got that all resolved. So, you know, we, we picked up one fumble, and that's probably the most important one. So for the new millions upon millions of lip men on the UFL fans, welcome. And the theme of this week's show is, did anyone want to win this week? Did they? <laughs> Did anyone want to win? There was a lot My of plays. No. Well, I'm going to say that there were two teams that definitely played like they wanted to win. One was Arlington, which I picked, by the way. The other was Michigan, which I apologize to you, Michigan. I will never doubt you again. <laughs> I, I know that your coaching staff probably won't get voted in because one team is probably going to go undefeated. But my goodness, the job they're doing. My goodness, the, the job that your players are doing. You're, you're down to your third and sometimes fourth quarterback. You lost one of your great defensive players this week. And your offensive line is much maligned. It just seems to be get better every week. Your running game looks strong, uh, not even from the, the expected place. I don't know what to say. Um, but, yeah, as far as other teams, we had the game of the season, you know, the preview of the championship game, maybe, St. Louis in Birmingham. Um, both teams did their damnedest to let the other team win. Um, though this was a good game. San Antonio, what the heck were you doing? You had th three turnovers in the game, two in the red zone. You managed to pull it out, which is why I'm wearing your shirt, because I did pick you, thankfully, in Miracles. <laughs> DC, I picked you. That's I'm not going to make that mistake again. Um, DC, you your shields you might have been up, but they were made of wicker. I, I, don't, I don't know what that was about but dc my goodness that that was an embarrassing show um that's right it's <laughs> been planning we're done with dc so that's right <laughs> done with dc i am so done i am so glad that my decision was not to purchase dc merchandise and i'm standing by it i am not purchasing dc merchandise if they won i was going to buy a dc shirt maybe even maybe even like a hoodie or something more expensive than a t-shirt so oh. Yeah, you'll be so, a producer when you do. So that, that, that's right, exactly right. That <laughs> big shot over here. So we're going to start where we normally do with week six ratings. But first, we want to give a shout out to Charles Richardson, who was our guest last week, um, mm -hmm. and I was on their show, the the Touchdown Crew, and I did a watch along party. Not going to reveal too much. 
uh, though he's pretty open with his group and his his Facebook friends and all. But he had a little setback, but he overcame that setback, and he was back on the air this weekend. So shout out to Charles. Uh, well, I can't read that, but I, I know that. What, 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 what's the young man saying? That is your son. He's saying, big week coming. Sorry, I can't make it. He will send his predictions for next week. Drop them in the chat. Okay. She'll give them to us. Okay, excellent. Now, I don't even I don't remember his predictions for last week, but I think we split on a bunch of things. Uh, so he either went two and two or one and three. I mean, you know, uh, just since we're on the air and I'm his father, I'll say I hope he went two and two. But, you know, I actually want to win this thing going, you know, this this contest of this battle of wits. Anyway, so we're going to start where we normally do, which is with the week six ratings. Pretty good news. The St. Louis at D.C. game drew 1.220 million viewers. So that's pretty good on Fox. Nice. Michigan and Arizona, a very solid 900 and uh, not Arizona, Arlington, a uh, very solid 929,000 also on Fox. The we had uh the Birmingham versus at Memphis and they had on ABC 956,000. And Houston at St. Louis, 829,000 also uh, on Fox. So three games on Fox, pretty good uh, ratings there, pretty strong. Everyone seems to be pretty happy with that number. Oh, look at Jake there. Two and two. He's cold, but not bad. No, you know, it's two and two is breaking even. I went three and one only by the skin of my teeth, to be frank. Um, But, you know, that still puts me at 11 and one for the last three weeks, uh, which is pretty good for those of you who are gambling. There's other news. As you know, the UFL has been talking about expansion for a while, and it seems like it's all but confirmed. And the thing that that sort of makes it cemented is during the course of just today, today is Monday, for those of you listen on the audio or listen when, not when it's live on on the stream, you know, on YouTube or on any of the places on SportsCap, on Yergs, I guess you have to listen on Yergs, or on uh, Fuel. yeah, today is May 13th, Monday. Um, so throughout the day, they were talking about rumors that they that they were considering airing Friday night games, and it was Fox's considering airing Friday night games, and then it was Fox's considering airing Friday night games if there's expansion, and then by the end of the day, Fox is going to air Friday night games for the UFL next season. So two little bitties of information there is if it is still contingent on expansion, means there is expansion. It also means that there's pretty good sign that there's going to be a season two. Um, and we're going to get Friday night games on Fox, which is cool. That's going to be a, a nice time slot. Yes, this is NBA playoff season. Yes, it's N- NHL season. Yes, it's MLB. But that's that's the season. That's, that's the season we're in. Um, and listen, football's number one. I know the NFL is number one, not the UFL. Not yet anyway. And it probably never will be number, number uh, two. Uh, you know, probably will ne- never be number one, but it, you know, could it overtake college football? I don't know. Maybe, maybe some of the divisions. Whoa, 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 calm down. Not in the South. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I said, the, the, some of the divisions, maybe, of course, with the power conferences, will be very different. Anyway, can it be a nice, solid number three? I'll tell you who won't be the Arena League. So, about five of the teams <sighs> have contracted all together. Another team came out and refused to play. Uh, so the Arena League, which we don't really cover too much, but in, in just some stark contrast, this is a league that looks like it's imploding and, and there's about to re- be a revolution. So, you know, you Arena League fans, you got you have an alternative. Come on over. The water's warm. Nashville is loving the Nashville Cats. They yep, were all in. Glenn wants you. Shay wants you. Yeah. Jake wants you. I want you. The UFL wants you. We all want you. Fuel wants you. Sports Cat wants you. Yergs wants you. Uh, so all of that. There's also confirmation the UFL is going to have a college draft, and it's going to be in the summer. Not sure if it's July or August, but it's going to be after the NFL draft, obviously. I, I you know, I'm not sure how, how it works with the players. I guess they declare for the draft, and that sort of means that they've abandoned their NFL dreams of walking onto a team or you know being more than a seventh. You know, they're outside the seventh round pick. Um, I'm not really sure how, how that works. We'll get we'll get more rules on that as it comes up. But there's going to be a draft, so you know, ESPN or someone will probably turn that into a TV event. So we'll look forward to that. Um, and Houston head coach C.J. Johnson said 
during this week that Houston is reevaluating everything. Well, good idea, Coach. Um, UFL, you may want to reevaluate Coach C.J. Johnson because um, he might be a place to start. Nothing personal against him? Isn't, isn't he married to Serena Williams? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, I saw a picture with him and her power couple. I don't know if they're married or just friends. I, you know, I'll what find I mean? out. I don't know anything about pop culture. If, if it's past 2000, I don't know anything. I, I believed in, in Y2K, and I just tuned out at that point. <laughs> if you want pop culture, you need to watch your Saturday night show. I missed yes. it. No, so Serena Williams is married to Alexis Ohanian. Hmm. So Alexis Carrington. Good. I like that. Okay. Not a CJ. (laughs) Not a CJ. Not a Johnson. All right. Well, all right. Enough about that then. Uh, Some transactions. Panthers linebacker Frank Gilda out for the season. Uh, Memphis edge Jeff McCullough on the injured reserve. Uh, Running back for Arlington, D.D. Hunter on the IR. A.J. McCarron after the game, day-to-day. Memphis signed a linebacker named Terrell Hanks. Um, San Antonio signed running back Puka Williams, who was released by another team earlier in the season. Thought we were going to see Puka get a lot of action this week, but no, we did not. Um, Michigan said that their starter was going to be Brian Lewerke, who had just recently been signed. And uh, Houston announced that Jarek Warren was going to be their starting quarterback for the week. And in fact, he was. And in fact, Brian Lewerke was the quarterback. But as you'll find out, that lots of quarterbacks started. Not all of them finished, some for very different reasons. So our first game of the week was Memphis at Arlington. This was a battle of really bad teams. Arlington winless up until this week. Uh, Memphis only one win. They won in week one. People keep trying to convince themselves that Memphis is adequate. They are the team as new people will be hearing for the first time, but uh, loyal viewers will know that I've said they are just not bad enough to give their fans hope, and I think that's cruel. Um, well, not this week. They got slaughtered. Arlington wanted to show that they were better than their 0-6 record, and in fact, they did. So Memphis started Troy Williams, a quarterback. Nobody was really sure if Case Cookus was injured. Turns out he wasn't. He was able to play. He was just benched. Um, so in the opening drive, there was great uh, a, gr- a really good kickoff return you had arlington establishing the running game which isn't something we've seen from them consistently luis perez was mixing mixing in the pass game there was a touchdown catch to sal canella there was even a, a, a two pass c- convert two point conversion uh but it got overruled um that was to vaughn's but it was overruled so you're looking like okay arlington looks good but they can't catch a break but Missed extra extra point attempts in this league is more the rule than the exception. Um, So it's six nothing. Memphis does nothing much with the ball, but they do uh, have a uh, get a fifty nine yard field goal. Long field goals seem to be uh, pretty commonplace in this league. The 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 place kickers, frankly, are some of the heroes of this league all season long. It gets goes to three six, and then. Uh, Peyton catches a, a terrific touchdown catch and a rare two-point uh, conversion caught by uh, Canelli, uh, Canelo rather, and it's 14 to three Arlington. And then there's an interception by Troy Williams, uh, and Arlington runs it back to the 24-yard line. You get a TD rush from Smith, uh, and then there's an interesting little conversion play where it looks like it's a toss back to Smith, but Smith, the running back. Then is the quarterback, and he throws it to Vanderbash or Vandermash um, for a two-point conversion. So all of a sudden, it's twenty-two to three, and frankly, at this point, the game was over anyway. Uh, we did have a touchdown cash by Daywood Davis, one of the highlights for Memphis. The extra point was missed. Well, we get a field goal by Arlington at the end of the half, and third quarter. Solid defense by both players. The one thing Memphis does is okay is their defense is pretty good. Um, They sort of fell apart at the end of the game, but honestly, I don't blame them. Uh, Early in the third quarter, we we get this big, big rush towards the end of the fourth quarter uh, by Devontae Smith. It's a 46-yard 
run long runs are pretty rare in the UFL. Um, maybe there's one for every three out of four games. Um, and then uh, Davion had a rush TD, which has also been rare for Arlington. TD catch for Tavon Payton. Um, and there's a two-point uh, conversion by Seth Green. I mentioned Seth Green because the only Seth Green I know was Austin Powers, uh, Dr. Evil's son and Austin Powers, and sort of that teen actor who still somehow is hanging around. Um, but different guy, I'm told. So at this point, it's 9 to 30 or 39 to 9. Uh, Troy Williams does have a, have a rush TD, but that was really his only highlight of the game. And it looks like he got hurt. Um, there was a two-point uh, conversion to Horse, 17 to 39 for Memphis. Um, by the way, the attendance at this game, there weren't this many people there, but it's announced at 8,042. Uh, Troy Williams was, was announced as being sent to the X-ray. That's obviously not a good thing for them. At the same time, uh, we find out that the Devion Smith is over 100 yards rushing. Uh, Canella gets another touchdown pass. It's the second touchdown of the game. Um, the extra point is uh, mixed, and it's now 47 to 17. Um, Actually, no, the extra point was achieved by Burnett. I'm sorry. I can't read my own writing, folks. I'm not wearing my glasses. I really should. Uh, <laughs> then Memphis fumbles, and Arlington recovers the fumble. Um, but but the play is ruled overturned due to an illegal forward pass. It didn't matter. Memphis just gave up. There was one more touchdown to Jake's favorite player, Vince Papelli, the son of the, the guy from Invincible. Uh, missed extra point. They go for the fourth and 12. It's it's 47 to 23 at this point. Uh, they go for the, the fourth and 12, but they get sacked on the fourth and 12. I don't even know who the quarterback was at this point. It wasn't Williams. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, so 47 to 23, and it wasn't even that close. So now you have two teams at one and six. Um, Arlington off the schneid and proving that they are only the what the eighth worst team in the league, uh, not the worst team in the league. So how do you guys feel about that? How do you feel about Arlington getting off the schneid and Memphis sort of your neighboring team, sort of, you know, sort of close team you got share? Yeah, I'm disappointed in Memphis, you know. All right. You were talking a lot about Fred Smith and pre-production. You want you want to you want to raise that that specter now well, while we're on I the air? I keep hearing the rumors. He's throwing a lot of money into the stadium there, and mm -hmm. he's trying really hard to entice the NFL. But market is the fiftieth. I don't know if it's number fifty or the fiftieth smallest. It's a small market. So are we talking about Memphis or we talking about Nashville? Yeah, Memphis, Memphis. Yeah, he's uh, Fred Smith throwing a lot of money into a stadium in Memphis. He's wanting something there. It's obviously not going to be arena, so. But I don't Nashville know about all that. Is pride maybe, for a team, really? I mean, they love the Titans, so I know they're not going to Knoxville. So, <laughs> well, maybe Fred Smith should pay his employees time and a half to to go to the games, or you know, maybe uh, get them all tickets and get them all a fifty dollar Amazon gift card. Um, you know, as long as uh, FedEx ships it and not Amazon, I guess I'd be competing with yourself. Um, you know, and, and if you show your scan ticket, then you, you get the gift card. I, I don't know, but maybe you should focus more on this team and uh, hope to build that market. Listen, we talked about last week, they should be doing Graceland nights. They should be doing Elvis nights. They should be doing Johnny Cash nights. They should be doing Memphis barbecue nights. I, you know, whatever, whatever I'd, it is. I'd to, come to Memphis barbecue night. <laughs> there you go. See, see Memphis. Listen, I, I got you one person already and, and she's not in Tennessee. I'm not going to tell you where she is because it's not my business to say. I'll but come from West Virginia to Tennessee. <laughs> All right. For the barbecue. Well, not, all right. Well, there you go. You hear that? You're going to get someone from West Virginia to come down to, to Tennessee. And I, I know Glenn's probably, definitely going to I could probably gather a bunch of people to come if it's going to be good food. <laughs> there you go. Well, there you go. The, the Memphis rub is going to entice some people. By the way, for all of you who celebrated Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day to the mothers out there in the world. Um, all of you deserve all the flowers that you got and the lovely brunches and the, and the nice dinners on a Sunday night and 
you know, whatever, whatever else that, that you got from those special people in your lives. It was a Next great game. Mother's Day for me. <laughs> Excellent. That's terrific. What what'd you do? Uh, I, I spent my whole afternoon talking about boobs with fellow fellow women. So it was great. Oh, sounds like something that I might do with, you know, <laughs> not the fellow yeah. women part, but, uh, you know. Okay. Yeah, it was great. Well, well, good. I'm glad you had a good time. And uh, that's something that most of us also love, which is boobs. All right. <laughs> Terrific. I'll send so, you the link when it comes out. <laughs> it's, you know what? Thank you. Sounds great. All right. Game of the season. Possible preview, St. Louis at Birmingham. At Birmingham, they sold out one half of the stadium into the end zones, 14,056 people there. But I got to tell you, a lot of people from Missouri made that trip. There was a lot of blue in that red stadium, a lot of blue shirts. So St. Louis fans, caught is the law, at least as far as when it comes to thou shalt support your team and thou shalt travel for your team. So good on you for doing that. This was a homecoming for A.J. McCarron, the Alabama superstar, state legend, married to former Miss Alabama, cheerleader for University of Alabama, legend just for, 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 for marrying that woman. Um, but it's his homecoming, but homecoming as the enemy. Could he do it? Well, the game opens up with looking like an okay drive, but a big interception thrown by McCarron. Return to the 32-yard line. Coach uh, uh, throws a super challenge on Birmingham, uh, saying that there was a, some type of pass inter defensive pass interference that was not called. Strange choice, same cho strange choice by Coach Holtz, who makes very few mistakes. Well, I would say with the, the, the few games when he started Corral was was a mistake, but you know, still winless. So um, you know, um, but this was interesting. It was a uh, you know, everyone was sort of scratching their head about it because it was very close and they're supposed to be pretty conservative about that they're supposed to look at it to see if it's clear in both slow motion but it would it should have been clear in real time as well frankly this didn't really look like pass interference in slow motion let alone real time too close but anyway super challenge birmingham loses the ability for any future ta challenges loses uh, a timeout um but they do get the ball to the one-yard line, and uh, you get a rush touchdown from our man C.J. Maribel. Extra point, no good. Um, then we see St. Louis getting the ball, and they're sort of dinking and dunking. They're taking what the defense is giving them. I call it New York Giants football, but when I say New York Giants football, I mean like from 1984 to like 1991. <laughs> I, so it's it's not like Eli Manning, New York Giants football. So it probably makes absolutely no sense to anybody who's hearing this right now. Um but, you know, they have a decent drive. They get a field goal at, at this point. It's 6-3. to three. Birmingham, uh, St. Louis, there's a, a, there's a defensive pass interference, a St. Louis challenge on it, and they lose that challenge as well. So you have dueling coaches' challenges. They both lose it. Um, and then you've got uh, – you get a first down for Birmingham – uh, there's, they have a nine-minute possession. They turn that nine-minute possession into a field goal. So use a lot of time, but, you know, again, getting field goals instead of touchdowns, another sort of story of the league that the touchdowns sometimes are in uh, large supply, though Arlington sort of defied that uh, last game around. Um, so anyway, we get uh, back to St. Louis, Hakeem Butler, who did have the dropsies a couple times, the stat line will still show that, that he had a terrific game. And in fact, he did. But a lot of the a lot of the plays he was getting was he was sort of doing like button hook or elf L left, L right, you know, sort of short passes, being like a possession receiver. Though there was one time where the defense definitely bid on that and he did like a an L fly and had the, the ball all to himself and, and took it to the house. He had a 47-yard reception. So on the stat line, he's going to have another huge game. Uh, but he had the dropsies. But he's not the only one. Sailors had the dropsies. But I can tell you, Birmingham, they, they also did things to, to defeat themselves as well or to try to defeat themselves. Um, anyway, on the heels of Butler's 44-yard reception, which was that uh, 
L fly, L and fly, which basically you remember from an olden television, basically it looks like you're going to do a bu button hook flare, but the, you know, the, the defender, you go, you run out flat instead of looking like you're going to stay short, you go out deep and he did and got 44 yards. Uh, then sailors has a touchdown rush and then sailors with another uh, rush for the two point conversion. So at this point it's, um, you know, uh, you've got 11 points for St. Louis. But you have a touchdown catch by Dean Kane and uh, I think it's Marcus Williams for a two-point conversion. So now we've got it. So Birmingham's ahead. It's looking pretty good for the, for them. Um, before the half, we have four drop passes by St. Louis. Sailors dropped a pass. Hakeem Butler dropped at least two passes. I think Jacor Peterson dropped a pass. Uh, there was a really bad defensive penalty. Um, and they were left with a, a field goal. I'm sorry, it wasn't 11 to 19. It was it was 17 11. Uh, and then after the long field goal um, for St. Louis, it's 17 14 Birmingham. So that brings us to the second half. Pretty good defensive struggle. Some offense, despite all of my nitpicking. It was actually an exciting game, I and mean, this game was very much in doubt and very competitive the entire time. Enjoyable game to watch. Uh, my notes on it are not that good, which is a blessing because I'm not going to rely on them, but it's because I was with the touchdown crew doing the watch-along party. And since we're talking, I'm not, you know, my nose isn't down. I'm not taking notes and all that, but I know who did what. So in the second half, we have a, a uh, Birmingham drive for a missed field goal, rare missed field goal. Um, and then there was a huge punt kickoff mistake, which – results in a turnover and St. Louis gets the ball on the 11 yard line. So basically a muffed kick, a blocked kick and St. Louis gets the ball and to make matters worse. I don't think anyone in Birmingham tackled the guy only stood there and then uh, tackled him. Now the refs actually called him down by contact. I'm not exactly sure that's the case. And, and the commentary booth said, we're not exactly sure that's the case, but since no coach challenged it, we're, you know, we're going to, Defer to the refs, although they have the authority to overrule it. I think they were sort of punishing the coaches for wasting their challenges earlier in the game. Anyway, St. Louis, instead of getting the ball on the one-yard line, gets the ball on the 11-yard line. They matter. Sailors has a touchdown catch, mixed extra point. It's 2017 St. Louis at that point. Uh, Marlon Williams then turns right around. Yeah, it's Marlon, not Marcus. Um, gets a touchdown catch from uh, Birmingham. Adrian Martinez, by the way. Had a pretty serviceable game, great with the legs. He opens up a lot of things, but, you know, he was the leading rusher for a long time for Birmingham uh, in this game. He might have ended up as the leading rusher. Um, missed extra point, but at this point it's 23-20 to 20, uh, for the Stallions. We get McCarron getting the ball back. So he he's getting a lot of pressure. He doesn't want to get sacked. He's facing the wrong direction. He could have thrown it out of bounds to the, to, to the short field, but he's – completely off balance in the wrong direction, and he throws the ball to nobody. He, he doesn't have enough arm to get it out of bounds. He's on his back feet, and there's no receiver nearby. It's, it's intentional grounding. So you lose a down with that, and that was just, that was just bad. Um, then there was a really bad kickoff, or, or punt rather, um, by St. Louis and Birmingham gets the ball back at the 50. So just when you think the Birmingham is trying to beat themselves, and it's at this point it's 26 to 23 St. Louis at home, they get the ball back at, the, at their own 50, and Kevin Austin Jr. gets a 40-yard beautiful catch, and he just flies. Nobody was anywhere near him. The tight end Sternberger, he starts to wake up in, in the second half. He catches just a one-point conversion. So it's 30 to 26 Birmingham at this point. And then there's a blocked punt by St. Louis. So St. Louis is back in the game. Does Birmingham want to win this game at home or is call the law? It's on the 46-yard line. They have great field position. Second special teams mistake by Birmingham, but nothing, nothing doing. Birmingham stops them, holds court. Game is over, ends with a final 30-26. I would say Birmingham walked out. Neither team really acquitted themselves that well with a bunch of mistakes. Special teams for Birmingham, I'd watch out for that, but they remain win undefeated. They are seven and zero. St. Louis falls to five and two, which 
you know, there's there's two of the five and two teams in the league and another five and two team in that division, though we haven't gotten there yet. But maybe the shirt is sort of a clue. <laughs> All right. So continuing with the does anyone want to win rant for this weekend on Common Soul? Yeah. All right. On Common Soul. It's good. I, I like their uh, their their music in the '90s on Common Soul. <laughs> is, is that right? Is that different? All right, Michigan and Washington D.C. Allegedly, twelve thousand two hundred and seventy-two people. I'm here to tell you that it was closer to two thousand two hundred and seventy-two people. I know these are tickets sold. That's all that matters for the for the purse. But it's not all that matters for parking and for vendors and for merchandise sale and for TV optics doesn't look good on TV if there's nobody's in these crowds. Guess it doesn't matter so much because we're getting a season two. Hell yeah! Hmm. Drinking some Broken Skull Ranch beer right now. I guess give me a hell yeah and drive a muscle car. <laughs> you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin now has a cat. He's become a cat what? person. Good for him. That's right. Sports cat? What are you saying? What? You're a sports cat. Uh, well, I, mean, I don't know. Tyson has his doves or pigeons, whatever they are, and he has cats. He had a hey, Tyson had a cat too. <laughs> he had a tiger. <laughs> I thought that was just in the movies. <laughs> no, no, I think he really no, had a tiger. He, I'm pretty sure he actually had a tiger. <laughs> yeah. Well, that wouldn't surprise me. So he's so I won't say it, he'll beat me up. So no, well, he's going to beat up Jake Paul first. Well, that's yeah. it. But he's going to beat up Jake Paul live on Netflix. Coming that's up not going to be a fight. That's not going to be. Well, it's... What, 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 what do you think it's going to be? It's going to be like the, cowering the, in the corner. No, it's going to be. You know, <laughs> was, the, was that guy the uh, money maker? Or, God, what was his name? He was the one that had all the money, and he uh, got to a big fight, and all he did was run around the ring and trying to avoid uh, getting knocked out. Floyd Mayweather? <laughs> was, yes, Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> yes. It's I mean, many consider him the best boxer of all time because of that. I don't know, though. It didn't look good on the optics. I didn't yeah, like No, it. it's not my style of, of boxing either. I, I prefer someone to be able to do both, but also you know knock someone out. But uh, I, I feel you. Anyway, all right. Back to the UFL, Michigan at D.C. Michigan, I'm not going to doubt you again. So, <laughs> all right. Here is the built-in excuse. D.C. plays on a soccer field, and they are the only team in the UFL that uses real grass, and it was a wet field. It didn't rain for a long time in D.C., but there was a deluge, so the grass was wet. That said, that applies to both teams. And... Well, all right, we'll get into it. So quarterback starting is Brian Lewerke. As, is, as we noted, this is his first start. There, They had E.J. Perry, who went down on the IR, may come back then. We had uh, Etling, Danny Etling, who was suited up and, and able to play. Apparently he's not injured. He was just sort of benched. Um, and, you know, opening kick is looking bad for Michigan. They're starting on their own six-yard line. Two uh, Matthew Colburn runs uh, to start. For about 30 yards. Actually, I know it was 29 yards. I didn't think I was going to remember that. I just wrote 30 yards, but yay me. Uh, and then there's a 30, a 53 yard rush from Matthew Colburn, who, if you want to, he he finished the game with 130 yards behind this offensive line that nobody is giving credit to. Um there was a uh a Lewerke rush touch touchdown. So the quarterback, new touchdown, showing he's a little bit unflappable tough. He's a big guy, by the way. Like he, he's a big, strong quarterback. He's you know, he's tall, but he's also bulkier than most of the quarterbacks uh that we see. Not not quite like not quite Donovan McNabb biggish, but in in that vein. Um, you know, not 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 like the uh most of the quarterbacks in this league are sort of slender, e even even like Reed Sonnet and Matt Corral, who are getting you know, your sort of your prototypical six foot four, two twenty guys. He just, he just he just looks bigger. Anyway, um, there is a one point conversion from Nako, who had a big day. I hope I'm pronouncing it correct. Uh, ca catch. Uh, so it's seven zero. DC, they get a thirty three yard return on the kickoff. Everything looks great. They go to Kiki QT for a reverse. Very clever. It's like a twenty three yard run. And then they then they hit the blocks. Nothing's going on. Missed field goal. So 
So they missed a field goal. That's when they started using the wet field as an excuse. Um, we then have another quarterback coming from, from Michigan. Not really sure why. Lewerke didn't seem like he was hurt. In fact, he wasn't. They just decided to go with a two-headed monster. So it was uh, Bryce Perkins, um, who I think was the number three quarterback before Lewerke was signed. Uh, we have the, the run game going strong with the two-headed monster. Wes Hills uh, had a rush TD, um, and they go for one point, but they get sacked. So it's 13 to zero there. Uh, and then DC with, you know, every now and then Jordan Tamo shows you that he's got something through a nice pass to Ty Scott, a 70 yard touchdown pass and catch. Ty Scott just flew past everybody. Beautiful play. Uh, two point conversion was missed. So it's 13 to six at that point. Muffed punt, uh, return by DC. Um, and Michigan recovers. So, all right. So DC gets touchdown. Michigan does nothing with the ball. They have to do a, they have to punt. DC, uh, the guy doesn't catch it. It, it hits, I don't know. They, they reviewed it from every angle possible. And it looks like it hit like his upper jersey, his elbow, and part, and part of his knee pad hit the ground. Michigan recovers. Um, and then Michigan muffs a snap. Uh, luckily it only resulted in a sack because the quarterback was able to recover the ball. So it's a loss of yards. So again, does anyone want to win? <sighs> All right. Bates, the hero, Jake Bates, the namesake of, of the other lip man, 51 yard field goal. That's nothing for him. He kicked 61, 65 yards in his yes, sleep. It is. Yeah. It's 16 to six. We have a, uh, so DC at this point, they're getting a little desperate. Um, but, they do, uh, you know, they, they do nothing after that, by the way. But Michigan gets the ball back. But D.C. has a critical fourth down stop. So, you know, they needed that stop. It's 16 to 6. They haven't done much right. But they're still very much in the game. Game is not out of hand. They throw an interception. Three and out. No, it's uh, out of hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not even sure it's an interception. Honestly, no. It's not an interception. That word is not I-N-T, but B-U-T, but three and out. And the punt is to the 49-yard line. There was a bad call on Hills where they're saying that uh, the player was down. So here's what happened. Hills gets the ball, breaks through the middle, loses his own balance, definitely is down. No player touches him on D.C. side. He gets back up, and he keeps on running. But the defenders did not respond to that. No one went after him, not because they were being lazy, but because the refs blew the whistle. So it was very well explained to us by the, the official review that because DC responded to the whistle, they couldn't respond to the player. He would have been undefended. It would have been unnecessary roughness. So Wes Hills gets deprived of a nice run and a little bit of momentum. So DC sort of catches a little bit of a, of a break there. Um, and uh, Michigan is held to a field goal, extending their lead to 19 to six. Um, but at this point, we're an FM. Is the S word okay for FM? Yeah, yeah. DC can't run shit. A couple of weeks ago, they had they had sort of a two headed monster. Hagen's looked like he was getting some rhythm. No, they couldn't run worth a damn. I think that their rush yards might have been in the negative. The quarterback might have had a few positive rush yards, but the only one who was rushing all was Tamu. And frankly, you know, I, I've been on and off about Tamu, but this game was not his fault. Like, he didn't have a chance. Nobody was helping him. Anyway, this, this goes back to uh, Michigan. They get another field goal. You know, they're not getting touchdowns either, but they're on their third and fourth quarterback. You know, the, a lot of strange stuff is going on. They're not at home. It's now 22 to 6. You know, this is sort of Michigan football. They're they're sort of unflappable. They're sort of disciplined. They just they just play professional football. They they never give up. They really don't seem to have a personality, except that they, they're just there to play football and they're gonna play their game. They're gonna take the points. Occasionally they're gonna take a chance, but usually they don't need to. And I don't know. I'm just really impressed by Michigan. Why aren't I wearing their shirt? Well, you're gonna find out soon. Um DC challenges a play, but they lose their challenge, and, of course, they lose a timeout, which might be critical to them. 
Uh, Ta'amo at this point gets injured. Uh, so DeAndre Francis, uh, you know, comes on down. Um, yeah. And then uh, we have someone named Jake McClendon as the quarterback three. So DeAndre Francis was the quarterback too, but he's already down. So they're on their, their third quarterback, and there was some significance to this because apparently this is there's a rule in the UFL that you can always have a third quarterback even if you didn't have three quarterbacks active, and, and this was invoked. So it's only interesting because uh, it was invoked in, in this particular game. So the quarterback three is in. Didn't matter. Um, the game ends uh, with, well, Jake McClendon did lead, lead D.C. to a field goal. So it's 22 to 9, but the, this game wasn't even that close. D.C. loses at home. I picked D.C. I'm maudlin about that. I will not doubt Michigan again. Um, you've heard it here. Doesn't mean I think they're going to win every game, but but Coach Nolan and his staff and, and the players, they're, they're doing a fantastic job at Michigan. Birmingham, yeah. I normally say is the most professional team, but – you know, they, they had some problems themselves this week. Um, anyway, 22 to 9. So Michigan advances to 5 and 2. Michigan and Birmingham are the only two teams that have clinched playoff spots. Mm -hmm. And they're both in the same division as well. Um, DC falls to 3 and 4. They are not eliminated yet. There's still three more games. They could still go 6 and 4. They could still catch both the Battle Hawks and the Brahmas. And our next game is is in fact San Antonio at Houston. San Antonio Brahmas, Houston. All right. So I picked San Antonio to win this game in a laugher. That is not what we got. The laugh was on me, ladies and gentlemen. The laugh was also on Houston, which sported a crowd of 6,134 people. There were not that many people there either. I assure you, Houston, my goodness, you're the fourth largest city in the United States. You wanted a team. You were upset when the gamblers were gone, and then you wanted the showboats, and then you got the roughnecks, and you made such a fuss that they switched the names of the teams and this, that, and the other thing. And then you said, well, you'll see when we start playing games at Rice Stadium, people will show up for us. Where are you? Where are you? I understand your team is bad. Listen, I predicted that this team was going to start fighting itself. They did it. The defense did not turn on the offense. They could have. But they they didn't. Houston actually they they played a you know at least their defense was pretty solid, but they did not give up. So anyway, this game starts off with San Antonio giving up a fumble. I mean, first of all, they're moving the ball pretty well. Quinton Dormandy does not start, by the way, um, and but it doesn't matter. They're they're moving the ball up and down the field. Well, yeah, and then but there's an early fumble recovery in the goal line by I think it was Speedy Peterson. Um, See, I, I, I didn't. I should have written down his last name because he was all over the all over the game, both in good and bad ways. Um, but you know, couldn't convert. Houston did get the the ball back, but you know they couldn't do anything with it, so they had to punt. Good field position for San Antonio. Another you know perfectly good uh, drive. They're going there. Second fumble, second possession in the red zone, recovered by Houston again. Does anyone want to win this game? So Houston's got the ball. Great opportunity for them. Did they convert? No, they didn't convert. Nothing. Reuben Foster, who is, when he's on the field, he is a beast. He's a monster. But he seems to be hurt every single game, and this game was no exception. He was on and off the field. He was hurt. They're showing him on the sideline. So San Antonio, finally on another possession. They kick a field goal. It's not sexy. Shea is here for the sexiness. But... You know, San Antonio, which is a sort of a sexy team. They're sort of fun. They sort of, they're sort of uh, unconventional, um, and they were unconventional here also. I mean, they 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 are sort of a little bit magical in a scary and like I wouldn't be thrilled sort of way. Um, but field goal, it's that's, three nothing. That's kind of sexy, you know, a little mysterious, a little scary. Well, 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 <laughs> you know, Shay, I've heard that you like the the bad boy. So you know, me, I've always been a good Depends boy. Depends on the day. Yeah, well, that's, well, then you're a little unconventional, too. or maybe, Well, I don't know. I'm a man. I don't understand women. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we never will. Exactly right. You know, and, you know, why well, even try? All right. So San Antonio then 
has a coach's challenge. And like pretty much every other coach's challenge this weekend, it was lost. Uh, they challenged on a non-call for offensive holding. I have to be honest. I thought it was offensive holding. I'm not really sure about these coaches' challenges on non-calls for penalties because there's holding on every play. And the uh, review booth took a lot of time to – you could hear his thought process saying, he's like, yeah, I see him, I see him, I see him. But I don't really think that – it doesn't look like he's really turning him. It doesn't look like it's having an effect on his trajectory. He did the whole thing. But his his arm was totally roped around the guy when – his body when the rusher's body was beyond the body of the lineman, but they did not overturn it. Uh, that could have gone e either way. Anyway, loss of a timeout. No more coaches' challenges for San Antonio. Um, at this point, we have uh, Guarantano coming in, uh, and he's injured. His wrist is hurting. He gets sacked. You can see it on his face. Um, Houston does recover the fumble. At, at this point, uh, we get a timeout called with three seconds left in the half, and there is a 48-yard field goal by Houston. So we have an injured quarterback on one side. We have a third-string quarterback on the other side with uh, two fumbles and other mistakes. And at halftime, we have a score of 3-3 three to three in Houston. That's what you get when – only 6,000 people buy tickets to your game. You deserve three to three. <laughs> the, I mean, it was just a good defensive game. So. Or you could say it was a de good defensive game. I mean, both of these teams did play pretty good defense, but San Antonio definitely beat themselves in the first half. I mean, they, they should have had two scores, probably touchdowns, but at least two field goals in the, in the first two possessions. And, you know, I mean... And the rest of the game doesn't play the same after that. So, you know, you never know. But we, we don't get to play the games in alternate timelines. You know, this isn't uh, Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness. Thank <laughs> God that movie was horrid. Um, that, that movie is what made me turn heel on the MCU, by the way. Um, what? Oh, you yeah. got to come back. Yeah, no, no, no. We get Deadpool. Well, we get Deadpool. Oh, Come back. Listen, uh, listen, the thing about heel turns is you can always turn face again. And, and yeah, I'm looking forward to Deadpool as well. And it hasn't all been bad. But listen, if you want to hear my thoughts on Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness, but by people who can speak much better and are more entertaining than me, go to The Critical Drinker on YouTube and to Pitch Meeting on YouTube and just type in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. And... Everything they say I agree with, and I think I had one more nitpick, but it doesn't matter. They hit all of the high points, um, and they're both hysterical. I love pitch meeting. And I love the critical thing. I watched the first one. <laughs> oh, my God. I, the, the pitch meeting is so good. I mean, and now I, I use catchphrases. I go, fumbling the ball in the red zone is tight. And it's like, do you think you can stop them? Do you think you can stop Houston from, from advancing? Sounds like it's going to be difficult. Actually, it's going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. So... But unless you watch pitch meeting, you don't know what those references are to. So, um, but those references are tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, anyway, the second half begins with San Antonio getting sacked and losing the ball. Houston recovers again. So again, game. Second half starts as the first half. What, what's that song where it goes? You know, second verse, same as first. I don't know. All right. <laughs> I you just know, totally lost my mind to hear the background. Sorry. You know the, the song I was thinking about from Michigan? What's that song from the 80s? It's got, Ain't nobody gonna break up my stride. Nobody gonna slow me down. Oh, oh no. no. I got to, got keep, to keep, keep on moving. That's my song for the Michigan Panthers. I know it's not that you popular. Know I will play that for you when I'm spinning records on the Friday flashback on the thinlinerockstation.com. Oh, 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 you have that kind of autonomy now. Only if you play me more Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. Won't happen on Friday. How about how about we compromise <laughs> with Taylor Dane? <laughs> yeah, I will be they set me up with Taylor Swift. Taylor. I can't. All right. So anyway, Houston recovers again. There's a guy named Tavante Beckett, who was the defensive MVP for San Antonio. He was all over the field. I think he's a linebacker. He's a bit of an undersized linebacker, but he's all over. He could be a safety. He's he's rushing. He's doing everything. He's blitzing. By the way, fun note 
for Houston. Probably the only fun note. Their place kicker's name is Molson. He is actually an eighth generation descendant of the Molson Brewers, the oldest brewery in North America, at least according to commentary uh, for the UFL, who I assume did a check. If not, it's according to Molson. Maybe it's a great Gatsby thing going on. I don't know. I didn't check it myself, but fun little thing there. Molson beer, you know, is good. Good Canadian lager and then other fine flavors as well. We don't support drinking here unless you're of age and drink responsibly and not driving and uh, you, you, uh, and you sponsor the show. Um, and those things are not all, uh, do we need, are they all ends or is the last one an or? I don't know. I'm not in charge. Um, I will right. take a sponsorship from Molson any day of the week. So there you I go. Will even drink, Only I will even if drink we receive samples. Well, there you go. So Houston, Molson kicks the second field goal of the game. It's six to three. Then Molson later on, via Santo and doesn't do anything with the ball, kicks a 62-yard field goal. It's 9-3. to three. Then we get a big rush from Houston, which is not a normal thing to happen for, for Houston. Uh, Quarandano, at this, he, he was trying to play through his injury, but at this point, I guess they decided he couldn't. Um, we still don't have word on his injury. I think I mentioned earlier that McCarron was injured in the, in the uh, St. Louis-Birmingham game, but I at the, at the top of the show, I told you he's day-to-day. -day. That's obviously after the game, he's day-to-day. -day, so that's good news for St. Louis fans and for the St. Louis team. Um, maybe bad news for their opponents. But Reed Sinet's back in the game for the injured uh, Guarantano. Um, and Kevin Hogan's comes in uh, for at quarterback for San Antonio. Um Maybe Dormandy did start, and you know he was it was stinking. Yeah, Dormandy about. started, yeah. Yeah, Dormandy did start, but he didn't finish. That that's I, I keep messing myself yeah. up here with my little ramblings here. He was so only Kevin 10 for 24, though. So yeah. And when Kevin Hogan's comes in, all of a sudden this team seems to you know, rally around him. I don't know, just like they they felt like they had more confidence, they played more solidly. All of a sudden, love it who who would who, who, was the leading rusher coming into this game. Obviously, wasn't after uh, Martinez, uh, but he he did nothing for the first three quarters. You know, he's rushing. He gets a rush TD after a ten minute drive. Now, normally a ten minute drive is terrific, um, but when you were down, you know, nine to three in the fourth quarter, maybe a ten minute drive isn't the greatest thing that that you want. But it it turned out to be okay here. Um, and by the way, I missed uh, a field goal by Houston. So it was actually 12 to 3 at this point. So 10 minute drive with six points, you're still down by a field goal. But remember, the UFL has three extra point options yes. one point, two points, and three points. Now, I don't think they had, I, I don't think they had as much uh, support on their quarterback as you think. I mean, he went five for seven, he didn't get many attempts. So. They were they definitely, it was rushing. Yeah, they, but, they didn't but, want to put the ball in his hands, I don't think. It's okay. Listen, five for seven is pretty efficient, and Lovett was able to get forward pushes and forward yards when they weren't before. So gotta, you know, gotta credit something. I mean, whatever it was, they decided to wake up and play. But so we know that my biggest gripe about the UFL is the missed extra points. I mean, I think that mm -hmm. they should just do a one point kick. I know it's boring, but there's you know, it, it, it's almost a given that you're going to miss. The three-point conversions are, uh, I think the percentages are like less than 10% league-wide. So San Antonio, who couldn't do anything with the ball all game until now in the fourth quarter, tries a three-point conversion, as they should. Mathematically, it's the only thing that makes sense. There's not a lot of time on the clock, and they're down by three. So absolutely, you do it. One point, two points doesn't get you anything. They make it through a pass to, to Corey Latimer, and... You know, the former Denver Bronco catches the ball, comes up with three points. It's 12-12. So, hey, we're deep in the fourth quarter. San Antonio, they, they've had a couple tricky, you know, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat before. Will they do it again? I sure hope so because I picked San Antonio. I don't want to go two and two. I don't want to be mid. I want I want to I want to be braggadocious. So Houston gets the ball. Braggadocious. They turn it over on the kickoff. And you know, we get Santosa for a, for a field goal. They run the clock down to one second. He kicks the field goal, 15-12. San Antonio sneaks out a win at Houston. Yeah. Houston, the defense played their hearts out. Uh, I mean, they didn't turn on the offense yet. They didn't turn on the coach yet. But 
they might. I, I'm just not sure who does it first, them or Memphis. But Memphis, like, can Memphis. point to everyone. It's it's not like such a tale of two cities. It's not so Dickensian as it is here in Houston. But 15-2 in San Antonio advances to 5-2. and two. Uh, St. Louis falls to 5-2. and two. So you've got a two-way tie um, in, in that division. And D.C. still hanging around. So exciting, not pretty, but exciting football. Those are your four games uh, on the week. Guys, you have anything that you want to add to this funness? Well, I'm still griping about Memphis and DC, so just let I me be. It, I think it'd be more fun if more people were interested in winning. Yeah, or or even playing competently. You know, that yeah. would be true. And if coaches would stop with these crazy challenges, which are really sometimes they're just really weird. All right, so. What are our games for for week eight? Let's do our predictions. I know Jake said he's going to email his in or or uh, put them in the chat. This is the time where we normally do that. By the way, I know I keep promising things and then they don't happen. I'm sorry, uh, but I think I'm going to get have a guest next week who's going to talk to us about how TV networks and advertisers and broadcast media buyers evaluate ratings and demos and as it as it does, is for the ufl now this person said they were going to be on the forums they didn't and but they couldn't tonight they said can i come in next week i said sure so this is not a promise it's a prediction not a spoiler um but we're always working on guests we're always working on you know building our relationships obviously we've done some stuff with the touchdown crew and they've done some stuff with us uh and so if anyone wants to be a guest or whatever, you know, but we're reaching out, but that's what I hope to get to you. And and the business of sports and the business of television is a little interest of mine, and hopefully it's of interest to you, though it does seem season two is is pretty secure in the bag. But you never know. TV's mm -hmm. a fickle thing. I mean, shows get canceled all the time, and sometimes people go, huh? How'd that get canceled? Um, so anyway... That gives that that vamped enough time for Glenn to pull up the games for week eight. What we got? <laughs> Memphis at Michigan. Well, I mean, <laughs> Michigan, I don't doubt you. Memphis, I don't doubt you either. As losers, Michigan Panthers with the win, probably easy, easy, but probably not as easy as it should be. Yeah, I don't think they're going to have a walk off. It's gonna, it's gonna be. Uh... It's gonna be a runaway, one one way or the other. It's good. Like, Michigan's like, gonna run away. I think like some strange score, like thirty-two to sixteen. Probably it's gonna be something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't see that, but I'll tell you what. I'll just I'll just say Memphis is gonna wake up and they're gonna do something. How about that? I'll, I'll just wow. wow. a little bit. They've two, got to for God's sake. <laughs> They've got to do something. Fred Smith, buy the team. <laughs> Shay, what do you say? So they're, they're going to deliver. Shay, what? Who do you pick? Um, um, I'll go with Memphis. All, all right, well, two homers there, or sort of homers. She just wants the barbecue. Write this day. down, Shay, in case I'm actually right. So. Well, okay. it's going to be in Michigan, so they're not going to do the barbecue thing in Michigan. Maybe they'll give away four. No. I don't know. No, no, that's I it's going to. I hope they have some good food. <laughs> in Michigan, I'm sure there's good food in the entire state of Michigan. I, I have yeah. been to Michigan, I, I think at least twice. So, all right. That flew so, through there. So, yeah. so I, I was going to say, I've so, been to an airport in Michigan. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, Next, I, we have the Houston a Rough in, in University of Michigan, and they had some pretty good food there, but I was a college kid. So, of course, like, like you know, chili, cheese, and fries is gourmet. Okay. Um, they had a good yeah. Cinnabon, so I can say that. <laughs> and I've been to Detroit once. So, yeah, Detroit had good restaurants, you know, your, your steakhouses and whatnot. All right. So, what's the other one? It's Houston, what? Houston, the Roughnecks playing the Stallions in Birmingham. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Birmingham on that one. Soccer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going with Birmingham. And that one is going to look like an NBA score, I think. So, yeah, I think that you. On would, one side. <laughs> on yeah, one side. Yeah, I, I think that could very well be. You, Birmingham will score more than 40 points. And Houston might score nine. Yeah. I'll agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. And then next uh, we have uh, your favorite, D.C. at St. Louis. 
Call is the law. I hate you, DC. I don't like I don't like how your red lights are synchronized so that you can never get more than 30 feet without stopping. I don't like all the one-way roads. I, I don't like how you're aligned like the pyramids to to to, to Orion's belt and 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 Sagittarius the hunter. I, I don't trust Masonic things. Uh, there's too many underground tunnels there. Oh come on. Yeah, there's a lot of reptilians there. I'm told. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, hey, you're talking yeah. to the wrong people about this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if the reptilians would show up and play, I, I, I'm sorry, amateurs. <laughs> I have a show called Garden of Doom. I mean, the, the power or normal guys can hold my beer, my Molson. Ooh. In fact, hey, ooh, you ooh, know, ooh. if, if I, I have to agree, if they'll if they'll show up and play a good game, then. <laughs> Yeah, and if not, we'll they'll, they'll, they'll bite the heads off, even with those safety helmets. Yeah. All right, so I, I believe it's clear, but just to be be sure, my pick is the St. Louis Battle Hawks. Uh, you know, being like crows after after an actual battle and pecking the eyeballs off of the mm -hmm. fallen warriors, just like the Mordihin would do, or or a uh, Valkyrie, or or my my favorite semi Mordihin semi. Aphrodite slash Athena, Freya. Yep. Well, my my only concern is St. Louis. Are they, are they gonna sit any starters? We're less than a month away from the playoffs. We're like They're three weeks away. Two. They are five and two with another team five and two in their division. I I don't. I, but they're I playing don't DC. Uh, D, D, but DC needs a win to stay in it. DC is not mathematically out of it. Yeah, and, DC technically, if they if they won out, they'd be in. Yeah, so yeah, but yeah. if DC wins this game, they're four and four, and all of a sudden St. Louis is five and three. Yeah. So no, I don't think they sit any players. I mean, uh, you know, I know McCarron is day to day, but you know, I, I think that probably his leg would have to fall off for him not to play. Okay, all right. Well, I, I don't know. I sense they're going to fall asleep on this one. All right, we'll pick DC if you if you if you're brave enough. I'm picking DC. All right. I'm, I'm yeah. going to try one, one. See, I've been picking along with you guys, but. Sh you know. Shay, are you going to join him in the Glen Asylum or are you going to go your own no, way? I, I, no, I think DC's screwed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's our last game of the week? <laughs> that leaves us with the Arlington Renegades at San Antonio. And that is going to be a four o'clock game on Fox. All right. I think this is going to be the game of the week. This one is unpredictable. Arlington has found their winning ways again, but they're at San Antonio. San Antonio, they, they as unpredictable as they are, when they scoop these, this is the second time they've scooped a victory out of the Jaws of Defeat, and the next week they responded with a pretty solid game. So I think they're going to respond with a pretty solid game. I don't know who the quarterback is. I don't think that it matters. I think that Arlington at 1-6, and six, they got their win. The chip is off their shoulder, but I, I think it's too late for them, and, and they may have to try some other things. Anyway, long way of saying I'm not, I'm, I feel like it's going to be a close game, but I think San Antonio is going to pull it out at home. Arlington doesn't have much of a defense. Uh, last week uh, was an aberration. They played a, a stinky team. Um, so I'm going to go San Antonio 33 Arlington, 24. It's going to be just close enough to have hope, but hope will not survive that day. Not not for Arlington anyway, um, but it will for San Antonio, which I've, I learned that, listen, I, apparently I don't know my Texas geography. I thought San Antonio was in West Texas, and I figured that Houston's in East Texas and Arlington's in Central Texas, but apparently San Antonio is only like three hours away from Houston. That seems like stupid team placement to me. I agree. Yeah. I mean, I maybe it's stupid that 55, I don't know my Texas geography of being like a really big state and pretty important, but uh, but I did. I mean, I do remember the Alamo, and I know that uh, you know Sam Houston was able to get troops there and all that other good stuff uh, a little bit late, but uh, you know, it was sort of like the Persian, you know, not the Persians, the Spartans, you know, with the phalanx holding off the Persians long enough for the rest of Greece to rally, but. Uh, Still, I, I don't know. I just thought it was in East Texas for whatever reason. I guess I, I guess I'm getting confused with uh, um, 
El Paso or Amarillo or something. You're going to distance all of our Texas fans, aren't you? I listen, I, I, I'm owning up to it. That I, I don't know. I just, I just don't. It's like three markets are so close to each other, and with a new sport, it seems seems like an odd choice to me. I agree there. So, I think this game will be over by the third quarter for Brahma's winning. I think that there's not the fourth quarter. You just go ahead and tune out or drink an extra beer and forget about it. Adam. Uh. I'll have to go with San Antonio. Okay. Three for San Antonio. Oh, so on the chat. Maybe that's Jake. Nope. Oh, no. That is one of our sponsors. So that is the Sin Line Rock Station. Where you nice. can hear me tomorrow <laughs> from noon to. I lost my mind. Two. <laughs> from noon to two. You will hear me <laughs> spinning records. <laughs> You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby. All right. Let me play rock tomorrow. I'll, I'll yeah. get your culture club in over the weekend. It'll be disco. So. That's dead or alive. It's not culture club. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Dead or alive. <laughs> that's right. I'm pretty sure it was 1985. Anyway. Um, all right. Well, Jake's picks are not in yet, uh, but hopefully he will email them in to you so that you can keep them honest. Um, he says he's two and two for this past week. I'm three and one. I am still ahead in, in this little thing. I think I expand, I expanded my league from two games over to three games over the young man. Uh, and, but his, but you know, he's, he was at a pretty successful clip. So my clip is just, you know, pretty awesome. Gotta say. Um, How much does he owe you after all this is over? <laughs> not a not a thing. We we you know we <laughs> unlike the UFL, we're not pushing gambling on everyone. By the way, that's that's something like the UFL pushes gambling mercilessly, which is fine. A lot of people like to gamble, but they don't push the fantasy football, which is really something that everyone can partake in. Mm -hmm. Kids, teenagers, if you don't have a lot of money to gamble, I mean, plenty of people shouldn't gamble and gamble anyway. But if you've got twenty five bucks or fifty bucks. You can buy yourself ten to twelve weeks of, of entertainment, you know, by being invested in, in every game. And I think it's really a mistake on the UFL's part not to do more with fantasy football and do, you know, maybe take it a little bit easy on the gambling stuff. Just just the plain old gambling and the over unders and this. I mean, I don't know. I, I you know, I'm, I'm I'm sort of not a big fan of like encouraging gambling more than it already is. Mm -hmm. um, but it just seems that. Fantasy football is a whole lot more egalitarian. Everybody can participate in it. And, mm -hmm. and it is wholesome fun. Yes, it's gambling of sort, but it's more like Dungeons and Dragons gambling yeah. than, than Las Vegas gambling. I mean, well, it's the fans more involved, I think. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I don't, yeah, I don't understand. They, they, they need right now the fan involvement to get mm -hmm. to season two. And then once they get to season two, they need even more fan involvement to get to season three. So. Yeah. You need yeah. to get to know the players too. And I mean, honestly, there aren't a lot of stars in the league. So you need to, you know, be supportive of the people on your team or hate them. And, you know, like in wrestling, love them or hate them. Just don't care. Apathy is the enemy of sports. So that is my advice to the UFL. A little bit less on the gambling, a little bit more on the fantasy football. It's probably too late, but there, you know, you can do playoff leagues probably pretty easy in a three week, you know, or two week playoff system, whatever. I think it's two weeks of playoffs, so one week championship. Um, not a, or is it one week of champion uh, playoffs and then the championship game? I think it's just two weeks, all in all. I should know this, but I don't it's, need to know it yet. It's uh, conference championships are June 8th and 9th, and the championship is June 16th. So there so, you go. It's just the one. All right, so just you could do a shortened league. I mean, we used to do playoff fantasy football league for regular NFL football. Obviously, it's long, but you know, it kept it kept getting smaller and smaller as teams would get knocked out. I mean, if you had the St. Louis Rams, you know, and they lost during the the greatest uh, show on turf, eh, you know, a, a lot of people were already dead in their playoff fantasy football league if if that happened. Anyway, just a little bit, just a little idea out there. Or at least next year, push the fantasy football league while maybe covering the, you know, the UFL draft. Maybe you do like a mock fantasy league or the same time that the UFL draft. Get us to know the players. You know, some of these like players like Hakeem Butler. I'm not sure he did himself so many favors yesterday with the Stonehands, um, but he's probably not going to be in the UFL. He's probably going to be on an NFL team. Maybe he'll be the fifth receiver, but he's probably going to be on an NFL team next year. 
Um, some other people, who knows? So, but you know, Aitman, he he might step back up into it. I'm just saying, get to know the players. You know, I I didn't know any players week one. Now you know, now I I know a fair amount. And that's how you, that's how you that's how you build a league. That's how you build fans. That's how you get people to want to see the games, watch games on TV. Certainly on TV. I know TV's king, but also you got to do something to drive people to the to the stadium. And literally, I mean, league drive people to the stadium. Hire buses. <laughs> Go to high school football teams, give them all a ticket, provide buses. Fred Smith, you own Greyhound, is that it? Send a Greyhound to all the all the college football teams and the high school football teams in a, in a 20 mile radius and bus them all on in. It just seems like it would be like a smarter financial decision to get people more interested as posing fantasy football than, hey, gambling. <laughs> Gambling. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's a 50 buck investment for most leagues. Yeah, I know that there's high rollers out there that do leagues, but I don't think anybody, you know, loses their mortgage on fantasy football. There are people who lose their yeah. mortgage in casinos. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, more fantasy football, less regular gambling. You're going to get more, you're going to get more of the youth interest. You're going to get people watching all of the games. I don't know. It's a good idea. They agree with me. Agree. Everyone yeah, agrees with me. Absolutely. It's got to be a good idea if all three of us agree. Make your people. just make your own D and D UFL. Just, exactly just make it like that. <laughs> That's right. The Lip Men. We offer our services for free for now, but we could use a little bit, you know, a little sponsorship, a little push. I mean, you know, there's not a whole lot of UFL podcasts and streaming shows out there. So you know, UFL, if you want to adopt yeah, us as the up. Unofficial, official, exactly. Hook us up. Um, That's right. So, listen. Friends, call me. Yeah. <laughs> this is our shortest show. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. Jake couldn't make it. I'm, I know he's sorry. Charles, we're happy you're doing better. Uh, Fuel, I hope you enjoyed your first uh, indoctrination, your first meeting, your first acquaintanceship with us. And, you know, try to do better next week. It's good. It's going to be fun. Well, you know what? <laughs> They're going to have the Paranormal Guys on Wednesday night, which is at 9 p.m. And we're going to have Ashley Hilt. And then we're going to, she's Moth going to Man. discuss all things Mothman. She is the self proclaimed Mothman expert. So, oh, is that Asher Z? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so she's, she's been a gardener, too. She's good. She will be on it now. Yes. Yes. I've talked to her. Uh, and then uh, who are we having after that? We're having a gentleman that talks about Poltergeist and Hackman. And so I'm excited about that. I'm looking so forward to hearing about Hatman. Show. Yeah, not a lot of people understand Hatman. I don't know that Hatman. Tom Franklin. A, Tom Franklin, that's right. Oh, I don't not know Rubble Hatman... Stilson? No. no. So, that's next week. Different Hatman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then. On the Green and Guardian show, we have a guest speaker from Chesapeake, Virginia Fire Department going to speak. So that should be good. That's Friday night at 9 p.m. And then on the Misfits, the theme of this Misfits, <laughs> Tom Brady, we love you. Banned in the USA. So it's an inside story. Tom, if you get it, call me. We'll talk about this. We love uh, you. So, <laughs> not, no, 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 no. I was in two days of YouTube hell. Thank you, Tom. So, no. <laughs> no, no. We love him. We yeah, love him yeah, until whatever. Friday or until Saturday. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. You can catch me Tuesdays and Thursdays from noon till 2 or 1400 on uh, the Thin Line Rock Station, where I will be playing some rock and roll music. Fridays, 6 p.m. till 11. I'm flashback Fridays where well, we're going to be doing a little music history and some good uh, flashback music 60s 70s 80s every now and then to throw one in there that really confuses me and i have to go who the heck is this and look it up but uh it's I eat taylor time. swift <laughs> uh, taylor swift i will admit until i started doing uh the dj work i had never uh, i couldn't name one of her songs so i can name one now so thank Shake you it off. Station. blank slate <laughs> that was the one i can that's a good one. Yeah, it was. It's. I have nothing against her. I, in fact, I, I follow the uh, NFL uh, romance of those two. So you know. Oh, nah. You know what? That's about enough out of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is a football show. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? 
if the UFL had a royalty couple like that, they might get more ratings. All right, well, never saying. But he was seated to contact the Derby without her. <laughs> well, he was, he, supposed to pro- he was supposed to propose after the Super Bowl, and he didn't. <laughs> oh. oh, come on. He was too excited. He's got, he's got to say, uh, what am I doing next? I'm going to Disney World. Isn't that what yep. they say? <laughs> he's not even the Thank one that you. was at WrestleMania. <laughs> No, and I saw that. Oh, <laughs> my home should have come out of the stands. Uh, <laughs> don't get me going there. All right. Well, we appreciate yergsradio.com for allowing us to be on there. And you can catch all of our shows at Sport Cat Shows. Please thumbs up, like, follow, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And the Lipmen are out for the week. <laughs>